Torre is in the building. Give Amen. him a big round of applause. My brother. Man, absolutely. And he's not alone. He's brought a man who's been the architect of a lot of great music to come out of this genre. Mm-hmm. Um, he's worked with a lot of great artists. Some of my favorite, one of my favorite MCs of all time is Master Ace. He's worked with Master Ace. He's worked Sex. with Torre. He's worked with Sadat X. The list goes on and on. What makes this dude really special, he's not even from here. <laughs> this dude is from the nicest place on the planet. He comes by the way of Canada. Please welcome Marco Polo is here with hey! us today. You know. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. We just came off a big party celebration at yeah. SOBs. Did, yeah. we do that? did we do that? We did that. We did that. We did that. We thank did you. That. Thank you, Sway, oh, for, thank for, you. for hosting and, and keeping the energy up and having the MCs come through. And, you know, Sway is going to sway no matter where he go. You know what That's I mean? That's for sure. Man. Yeah, it happens. Uh, but, <laughs> but Master Ace was there. Scoob was there from DOS Effects. Crazy. We had listeners of this show uh, that showed up that day, too. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, and, and gifted me because we were bigging up the show. But <clears throat> I want to say congratulations. They got a new collaborative album, A Midnight Run, that's out right now. Vinyl. They, they got it. the vinyl up, too. And it, it was, what, 14 years in between? What was the distance between the, the time y'all worked together the first time and now? Marco Polo. Yeah, 14 years. Yeah, man. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Just That's to confirm. The I could have left him home, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But, but why? Why? What, what did you hear that made, gave you that itch? Because it's been about five years since you've done something, right? Yeah. What gave y'all the itch? I mean, we always been making music. Okay. We just hit the ground running after that album. We both went on our own paths, always stayed in touch, always worked on music. And we had these joints from like six, seven years ago. And mm-hmm. I said, yo, these, these are crazy songs. Let's release them. I kept pushing them. And then we wrapped up and we added a couple new ones and we had an album. So you're doing with uh, what I heard Nas speak about, like a lot of times. And, and Torre by no means is, you, you, you're a younger generation artist um, to us, you know, you... Um, and so you're still in your prime. But a lot of artists who put out music as long as you have get gun shy. Mm. You, did you get to, because you do so much, you work with the Grammys, you're, you're, you know, you, you're philanthropic, you do a whole lot of other things. You have grown as a human being. Yes. Uh, how has your relationship with rap um, changed? I love it. I still okay. love it as much as I did on day one. Okay. Um, I think the the biggest thing between me going out and to do other things kind of goes back into that clip that you played. Um, I wanted to do things that I was able to continue to stretch my creativity and stretch my contribution to the culture and figure out other ways to bring in revenue that didn't make me have to compromise what I Mm. went and did Mm. in the studio. Mm -hmm. And so for all the other endeavors that I've been able to kind of put in my my catalog of, of career, those things are things that I love to do, but they're byproducts of this hip hop. You know, like yes. MCing is the springboard for all of it. There's no acting, there's no radio shows, there's no recording academy, there's no none of the other things I do without hip hop. Now, I will say that the last project I put out five years ago, I kind of started to get bored with the rinse and repeat of just put a record out, do some shows, shoot some videos, do some interviews, sell a few thousand, do it again. I was like, I need to do something to keep this exciting and fresh for me. So sometimes you got to step back so you can step back into it the right way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like that. And reflect on it. You you know, we were talking then about streams. And, you know, most recently we've been hearing how, you know, in the rap genre, the streaming has gone down substantially, right? What do, Why do you think that is? I think people just tired of hearing the same shit. You know, I think people are tired of hearing the same content. Now, I think the youth stream at a really, really high rate. Mm -hmm. So they'll continue to keep the ecosystem going. But I think as a whole, you know, when you get to just like your casual fan and especially like a music novice who just hear discover new music from shows like this or whatever, it's not a lot of things that people are going to go back to and run up like they once have. And then mm-hmm. everything goes in cycles mm-hmm. as well. You know, so pop will kind of move back to the forefront. You might get country or you might get, you know, Americana that yep. moves to the forefront. But hip hop is the one of the youngest genres and it's not going anywhere, but it's going to go in a cycle. It'll be the most popular. It'll dwindle. It'll shoot back up to the top. That's just how it goes. Mm. Torre is here. Marco Polo is here. Give him a big round of applause. I mentioned you work with the Grammys. <laughs> 
Grammys get a lot of metaphors in rap verses. Yes. <laughs> I think Blue Ivy, a Grammy was her sippy cup. Yes. Right? I think Drake made a comment in one of the songs. He, yeah, he, he said? said it was his doorstop. It was stopper. a doorstop. He told uh, uh-huh. Jimmy Jam that he uses as a doorstopper. What are your thoughts? Of, when you hear that, because that, I'm a, you know, I'm a member too. Right. You know, I always go, oh, man, what? come on, guys. What are your thoughts when you hear that? I mean, it's just, it's easy to make the Recording Academy and the Grammy a punchline. Yeah. Because one thing that I've seen since I've been a part of the Academy is every year people hate on the Grammys until they're nominated. <laughs> until <laughs> they win. And if mm-hmm. they don't win that following year, they write back to the talking shit part. And I'm just like, yo, your price went up. I go to your bio. It's literally the first sentence after your name, Grammy Award winning. You walk on any show, Grammy Award winning. So it's still... It's still a very prestigious award. It's easy to talk shit about it. And everything is flawed. Everything in the world is flawed. So you can highlight the flaws of the Grammys or the Recording Academy, but you know, when you win one, you know you changing the number on that, you know, on that on that offer. And so it just you gotta take it with a grain of salt. It's just like no nothing is a hundred percent perfect. People gonna love all the time and the recad- the recording academy is no exception to that. Mm. Well, I'm gonna ask you one last question. I know Tracy and Heather and Mike Muse over there, they they wanna jump in mm-hmm. on this, man. Is the chain <laughs> number one real? Yes. <laughs> okay. Did you buy that or LL bought that? <laughs> Because I know you work at Rock the Bells. Oh, man. Uh, LL is a very generous human. Yes. I don't know if he's this generous. Okay. I don't know if I passed that, you know what I mean, that gift level yet. Okay. But, yeah, this is... <laughs> no, I admire your relationship with LL Cool J. And I say this because I told you, I might even texted you, I saw LL, you were backstage at one of, um, at the tour, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And... LL greeted you like he was greeting his little brother, and he and he hugs you, and it's almost like he respects you, you know, like he we he might want your feedback how we do, you know, he might, you know, um, what is your relationship with him? And, can, and you, I know you've sat with him one on one now and got some off mic. We yeah. got yeah, we had some great conversations. Yeah. yeah, yo, I'll say this, man. For L's been a superstar my whole life. Yeah. Not a rapper, not famous, not a rap star. LL's been a superstar for as long as I can remember. And facts. That's real. But, but that's for everybody. Everybody. Yo, yeah, he's right? so fucking gracious, bro. Like, not that he doesn't have to be because he's a God-fearing man, but you think about all the accolades. Let's just look at the Force Tour, right? LL could say, yo, I'm, I'm going on the road. I'm going to sell these shows out. I'm going to do these I'm gonna do these venues. LL got Rock Him with him and Salt and Pepper and Juvenile and Bone Thugs and Big Boy. And it's not to say that all of these art- artists aren't worthy or deserving but to see Rakim in these arenas every night that are filled up in 2023 when LL could have just went out there and did that on his own. When you see LL start something like Rock the Bells mm-hmm. where equity goes back to the OGs and you turn on the radio and you hear Kaz and Shy Rock or you hear myself or you hear DJ Scratch and he's just g- continuously giving opportunities to people when it's not necessary, he doesn't have to. And when you tell him he doesn't have to, he'll rebuke that What I do have to because this is what I do. This is the culture. So I love that he's taking ownership of what he thinks hip-hop should be doing and not just saying, yo, we need to do this. We need to put on. We need to represent. He's yeah, just doing dope. it. Mm-hmm. He's doing, doing it. it. Yeah. Look at the tour. Look at... The, the cruise. cruise. Right. The cruise is coming up. You I'm, got ho- I'm a host on the cruise. Yo, I don't know if you up. knew that. I'm, no, I'm, ah. I'm Saturday. I'm, you, I'm the you LA. In? I'm in. Oh, that's it. I'm in, baby. Well, listen, that's what let's show up. Yeah. Yeah. I'm doing. Uh, I'm uh, Breaking break, break, break 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 news, news <laughs> to the entire team here at Swing in the morning. What? And probably to the Rock the Bells team, too. No, I wasn't able to make that announcement. He's both, yeah. He dropped it Torch, did you know? Yeah. We spoke about it a little bit. You be with Torch. Now nah, we spoke about it a little bit. <laughs> I talked about it on air, Tracy. Don't start because Heather's back. You heard this. All right, man. Let me see the truth. <laughs> okay, I'll... but that's but that's that's what's incredible. Did you play him this album? I did not know. Did you find out what he thought of it? You know, L L is oh he's on tour right now, so I'm giving him that space. But what I learned about L <laughs> is he's always listening and watching and paying attention mm-hmm. when you think he don't. Even down to the name of my show on Rock the Bells, the name of the show. I had a whole different name, and I talked to Jay over there, and we was going with this name and this concept. And then he was like, yo, L says 
maybe we should just go with that raw. You know, the song you got with Pete Rock? He really likes that song. In my mind, just, it was the head explode emoji. <laughs> I'm like, yo, not only does L know the music, but he's he's ingrained in the shit so much so that he's paying attention. You know, I'll get a text, yo, me and Ty listening, or I'll get a FaceTime, you know, when the book dropped and FaceTime Ebony and L was right there. And he just stays super tapped in. So, mm. um... I don't know if he heard the album yet. I haven't gotten any feedback from him, but I know once the tour is over, hopefully we'll have a moment to sit and discuss. Ben Torre is here. Uh, the album is called Midnight Run. It's out right now with Yay. Marco Polo. Trib, you want to jump on that? Yes, sir. Um, Torre, I love how you said hip hop basically is the soil that all your other ventures grow from. Sure. I'm thinking specifically with you as a broadcast journalist, as a podcaster, as a content creator. Um, and there are other MCs who are also in the media space now and perhaps even MCs that are thinking about it. So two part question. One, because so many folks when they're creating their albums tend to not want to listen to others and be subconsciously influenced. Do you find that can happen when you're interviewing folks or there can be like moments when you're speaking to another artist and it's like, dang, he's about to drop something that was an idea in my head. You know, like how are you able to... I guess find a way to, yes, ask all the right questions, but not be like deterred or influenced by another artist's response. Um, I think if you walk into a supermarket and you walk into any aisle, you're going to see Wonder Bread, you're going to see Whole Grain Bread, you're going to see Oat Bread, you're going to see Raisin Bread, you're going to see Big. There's a variety, and they might all do kind of the same thing mm -hmm. but it's the way that the presentation is it's the brand that you can trust it's maybe a, a special flavor or just something different that makes this brand of bread your go-to and your specialty out of all of the other loaves that are on the shelf mm -hmm. and that's what that's what Torre is to me like yeah other people do media other people um make music other people might have radio shows other people may act other people may be songwriters other people may have podcasts i'm stunning right now <laughs> <laughs> you know what i'm saying true. the list is never but, ending yes yeah like yes. there's no there's only one me <laughs> there's only one me like so Facts. i don't i don't allow any outside noise and influence to ever deter me. My path, what I set out to do, mm -hmm. is what I'm going to do. And if I see you on that road, I'm going I'm to salute you. But I just know that what I'm doing, I'm not going to let it be affected by anybody to Very the left important. or right. So for any MC that we're thinking about getting into the podcast space, media in general, what are some of the pros and cons since, you know, now you have folks who are Hard speaking earn. about their peers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what's the advice that you would give someone? Before you answer that, uh, he and Bonsu Thompson have an incredible um, podcast called Hard, right. to earn. Hard to Earn. Right. They do incredible work. If you haven't got up on this, check all your local uh, DSPs. Yes. Uh, and there's a, a real insightful, uh, journalistic, uh, uh, factual approach an opinionated approach to a lot of legendary projects that have been released over the past few years, um, past few decades. And you mm -hmm. pay homage and people giving flowers now, but you guys were already doing that. So salute to you. Yeah. Thank you. Go for that answer. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. Yeah, um, the thing about Hard to Earn, I'll speak just to my, my product specifically. Please do. The thing about Hard to Earn is that B and I are always coming from a place of love. One, even when we being critical, or even when we have to talk about something that, or just not our favorite song, right? Yeah. But this is an artist that we respect so much that we are taking the time to talk about this project. We talk, we taking the time to, um, to to highlight this project, whether it be a new project or it be something on a on a classic anniversary. We do ten years, fifteen, twenty, etc. Um, and so it's nothing that I wouldn't say to anybody in their face. It's never coming from a, mal a malicious place. It's never with the intent to try to put somebody down so I could big myself up. Like, B is a very accomplished journalist. He got a movie out right now, Story Ave, that he co-wrote. So he's coming from a place of love in this culture. I'm coming from the artist perspective, the touring artist perspective, the radio personality, the songwriter perspective. So I think that I have some validity behind the words and the words and the, the th thoughts that I choose to put on some of these projects. And so, I'm like I said, I would go and sit in the room with any of these artists and have the same conversation. Yeah. And so, like, we do it out of love. We do it because we want to continue to push the culture forward. And why any pundit outside of the culture should be talking about our shit as opposed to us is beyond me. Mm -hmm. Like, who better 
to to give Heather B. Flowers on a classic record than somebody who she inspired. Myself. <laughs> I love it. Torre here. Mike, well you want to say anything to T? Yeah. Mike Muse. Yeah, I have, a, I have a couple questions, but I'll, I'll try and keep it very it's simple. Walk, walk. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to keep it very, very succinct. Tori, you have lived such a full, and you're living such a full life. Mm -hmm. You know, the podcasting, the touring, the real personality, everything that you just mentioned. So I'm going to do a two-parter. One, what does somebody like you rap about now? Like, what are your topics? <laughs> What's some of your thesis? And then the second part to tie into the first part is, what advice would you give younger artists uh, who are trying to come into the game on the importance of you know, living outside of their four walls, right, or their four block radius and how that can have an impact on their art? Um, I write about life experience. And that's another reason why I'm not one of those artists that put an album out every year. Because I don't know how much growth is going to happen from project to project within a 12-month span. So I want to tour. I want to hang out with my kids. I want to go on college visits with my daughter. I want to drive around the country with AAU games for my son. I want to experience more life and then come back to the table and come back to the studio with that. So that's what I'm... I used to think when I was younger that I would run out of stuff to rap about, but that's when I had a very small perspective of what the world was. Um, the world is a, a huge place, you know what I'm saying? And so even recording in a different city, a different state, a different country can give you different experiences. So um, I always come from an honest place, and that's going to continue to keep the music evolving. As far as advice, uh, don't do it. No. Um, <laughs> be, be, <laughs> be true to whatever it is you believe. If you about getting to that bag and that's all you care about and it's not a love or care for the culture, I would say don't do it. But if you are going to do it, be true to that. Yo, I'm here to get the bread. I'm not a rapper. I'm an opportunist. I'm a hustler. I'm a person that's just trying to get to this. Um, but if you really do love it and you really want to make a career out of it, I would say study those that came before you. Be prepared to do it for a really long time without making a dime in return. And um, just just be be mindful of all of the journey. Because some people want to sprint right to the finish line. And the joy is in the journey. It's the yeah. whole entire process. I hadn't heard that interview, that clip that you played since I said it. Mm -hmm. But just seeing my perspective then and knowing what's transpired from that time into where I am now, it's crazy because that gives me chills because it's like, wow. I had this mindset then, and it was a, a very real place that I came from. And if you look at the years that have passed since then, it's been nothing but everything I said, and it's kind of coming to fruition. So it's just yeah. dope. Man, great question, Mike Muse. Great response. And I got to give a shout-out to Lonnie Light because we wanted him to find the clips, 21-year-old um, man, and, and what stood out to him was that clip. Word. Yeah, so that's shout pretty dope. I met Lonnie in the hallway, yeah. and he was like, yo, Torre. He was like, man, I've seen you around before, but – I'm doing this research on you, and he showed me some love. So I just want to show him some love yeah, back. Man, I wow. like King. Respect, King. Righteous. All right, HB. So my question is for Marco Polo, because um, as a producer, I'm wondering what your mindset is like. I think we often, we, we, we love artists. Artists are celebrated. They're in the forefront. And we've heard so many artists talk about what it's like for them to go in the studio and write their writing process, as Torrey mentioned. But I'm always curious as the, as the producer, when it's time you sit down and agree to do an album and work on a project, what do you do? Do you have some rituals? Do you just like, okay, now I got to go beat shopping, or now I got to do this, or now I got to do that? Or is it something that you already have in mind which makes you feel comfortable to work with that artist to begin with? I think going back to something Torre said, once we kind of shift gears earlier in our careers to get some income coming in other ways in music, not just the creative stuff, it lets me do what I love and not stress anything else. Mm. So it really just starts with me sitting down in the purest form and creating beats art um, because I love it. And then once I have these beats, then everything happens from there. Then I'm like, you know what? These three right here, that's for Ace. These three oh. right here are for Tor. Yeah, I'm not really... I mean, obviously, sometimes I sit down and craft something specifically for an artist, but really, most of the time, I just create. And then from there, it's like, I don't just send 20 beats to someone and let them pick. I never do that, because... Mm. MCs will make the wrong decisions most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> no offense. Yeah. And sometimes they don't. But with, with Tor, I know what the sound is. And so he'll get beats right. that I think. And sometimes he'll push me like, yo, play some other shit. And we'll do that because we have a, a friendship to do that. But I never just send what I make to anyone ever. Everything's curated. Mm -hmm. And from there, it's everything kind of 
you know, starts from that process. So did Sean Price pick the prisoner beat? Oh, that's a great story. I'm Damn. glad you asked that Damn. question. Rest in peace, Sean. I miss yes. that dude so much. Um, he called me on the telephone, and he was watching a movie, and I think it's a, a Billy Paul sample? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yo, you gotta... He gave me an assignment, which I took as such a compliment, because it's Sean Price. He could call mm -hmm. any producer. He's like, I know you can take that and make something. So he gave me the whole idea. He's like, take that sample, make a beat, send it to me. And I did, and that's how that song came to be. And then he put Freeway on it. Um, so it was yeah, wow. super crazy. That's a crazy song yeah. too, man. Congratulations, yeah. all the people Thanks you got for to work that with, Talib, yeah. Styles P, all the different folks you work with, man. Marco Polo was here. I'm here. The album is Midnight Run. Why y'all call it that? You jump in. No, no, no. <laughs> um, so we did Double Barrel. Obviously, people just assume that it would be Double Barrel Two or Double Barrel Loaded or something that's kind of in that cliche. And we wanted to do something different. We wanted to continue on what we did musically, you know, pick up where we left off, but we didn't want to just call it a sequel album. And so once we got in the headspace of kind of what we were thinking about, I went and did a Google search, honestly. Like, I was like, what is a classic 80s movie? And we started, cla you start, start searching through, and Midnight Run kind of just jumped off the screen. And I hit Marco, and I was like, what's think about Midnight Run? And he was like, let me sleep on it. And the next day, he was like, yeah, let's do it. And that's it. But this sounds like... But we always have arguments, and I want to ask everybody in this room to their opinion. <laughs> What's Iller's? Because I think a group name is Iller, like Gangstar. You know, that's Guru and Premier. But then you have Pete Rock and CL Smooth. What's doper? Two names like how we do it or a group name? Because I'm group name. We always got shut down by the label. They're like, your name has a sales history and this and that. Right. And things earlier, I wish I would have fought harder to have us as, you know, Double Barrel, the group. No doubt. But I'm, I'm asking, yeah. Know. <laughs> I don't I like I like I don't know it depends um I think uh King Tech and I used to be Flynamic Force right and then we reversed it nah we need to put our names out you know so people can identify us and our individual mm. brand and together we make you know and then we can make projects with certain names so right. I'm with the names Me you too. like the names I like the names Me okay too. all right I like the names but I like the group name Midnight Run I think that would be dope yeah. Well, yo, that, yo, every yeah. album we just change our group name. <laughs> hey, so man, give these guys a round of applause. New album is Midnight Run. Marco Polo, yes, Torre. Sir. Before you go, I know Marco Polo gave us a beat. I did. Torre, exclusive. You're the only person who ever freestyled an entire interview. I'm not going to ask you to do that. Okay. But you, you. got to spit <laughs> some oh, bars. You in the Valley of the Hyenas. <laughs> Turn that beat up a little for me, please. This is not the Marco joint. This, this, is, is, cla this is classic whole shit. Yeah, it's whole shit. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Doom, doom, da, doom, doom, doom. Yeah. Shout out to Primo. Shout out to Prem. Shout out to Hove. Shout out to whole Rock Nation. Brooklyn, what's up? Hey. Yeah. Okay. You know, Hope took a little minute. I got to take some time with it, man. Come on, man. Hope he's probably yeah. listening to our age. Don't worry. Yeah. Make this work. Look, after a five year hiatus, I'm back on it. Took a little time to read scripts and to act on it. Took a little time to write hits and put plaque on it. Still coming through. Black really don't crack, don't it? Young T.O., R to the A, E, though. You got me and Sway on your radio. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> look, look. Crucial choices to make. Master pillow to rock. Three second differential time still on the clock. I bust down the new business, not a grill or a watch. In front of Diddy Crib, how I chilled on the block. The best parts of my day don't get posted a lot. The less they know about shit, the closer they watch. A room full of Dalmatians, but they want in your spot. The game is cold blooded, but they tell you you gotta stay hot. Riding in that Maybach or a low V. Either way, I'm strapped, cause every city is OD. I skipped the Grammys the day that we lost Kobe. Don't never let them tell me it's love, you gotta show me. My own pops wasn't around. Really to mold me Learned a lot of shit From Rick Harton and Coney This rap shit From Clark Kent My OG And his homies Was big and big homie You too cliche Ain't never gonna fizz homie I'm B2K It is what it is homie You know me On my young veteran shit Couple rappers do interviews Don't none of them hit Couple spitters do media Don't none of it click
click And when I'm not killing all that, I fuck with a script I promise it'll get uglier than Tales from the Crypt Rob a rapper like Blizzard did and tell him to strip Hurry up, goddammit, I used to be well mannered A rose out of the concrete was well planted How you taking the deal if you can't understand it? Type shit rappers do, I just can't understand it Don't never take it for granted how they taking advantage I ain't got a big manager, but look how I manage Way I get to the bag, shit is borderline manic The pen hit the pad, shit is all around panic My fan base, wear that shit and get frantic Anytime my drop is just raising the standard It all went the court in the plan, I didn't plan it The flow is out of this, shit, I spit planets yeah. I take charge, no slot and feet planted Deceased beats and feast on your weak standards I never ask for respect, I demand it Hit record and I speak candid Torrey, we got a hyena up in here You better work <laughs> so, I ain't even acknowledging whack rappers. <laughs> you don't even need to be in the same conversation as Torrey. Wow. Damn. Soon as I drop, I raise the standards. Mm. Bastards. <laughs> Come on, man. Give it up for Torrey. That's fire right there, baby. Give it up for Marco Polo. The album yeah. is Midnight Run. I appreciate you brothers coming through, man. Yeah, so much. Thank All you right. Love us. you, family. Absolutely. Uh, coming up next. Our next guest found out that she 